Hey everybody, this is Shelly from Blossom, pretty near Paris, Texas. And I want to keep it real. <laughs> this time I want to talk about why not to have a macaw. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's going to want to get up here and get in the picture and that's fine. But, um, I want to talk about some things that I wish I knew. I take the glasses off. I really wanted to get the solar waterfall next to it so you could see how it's doing. It's really amazing. But anyway, um, what do you think, Aki? All right. I think one way to tell you some of the bad is just to share the truth of what happened yesterday and today. And um, to be able to do that, I've got to tell you a little backstory. I've been blessed to be able to spend a lot of time in the organic garden and and hang outside and she she's been a dream during that time. It's probably been three weeks, four weeks, I don't know. With their pandemic, I just stayed home. Now she's gonna start pecking at the camera. Come here, bye bye. Come here. Okay. The last, let's see, five days. I began a project that I spent a lot of time into, um, was preparing for a garage sale. I'm not a garage sale person, but there's just so many things that I really need to pass along, trying to find a way to price it inexpensive and let somebody else enjoy it. And a lot of times I've just donated to places, but this time I thought it would be helpful to <laughs> got quite a lot of expenses with animals now that we have um, four chickens and I don't have a chicken house yet but that's okay all right get back to my story okay I spent five days um, working but not at the house at at another location to get this garage sale going. I'm gonna have to see about that light. It's shining through. I don't know. I guess you can deal with it. We're outside and this is where she loves to be. But, okay. Back to the story. <laughs> and it's just gonna help give you some ideas of what happens when you have a really close bond with a macaw. And right now she's even a little bit jealous that I'm talking and not I'm not looking straight at her. Um, so in lots of ways she's pretty spoiled, but we have a good bond. Okay, now when you're gone and you've developed this bond, this is what I found out. Um, I needed to work on that project and actually I spent two nights at this location but um she likes a lot of sleep and she'd already gone to bed so that was really not a big deal that part didn't really bother staying gone all day not getting to come out and see the birds and the waterfall and the chickens and the dog uh-huh right now she's really wanting to play so this this is not <laughs> what are you doing mm -hmm. say i love you i love you <laughs> yeah, you want some water. So that's her newest word. All of a sudden, she loves a bath. At first, she was scared. You were scared of the water. And now, I know. I know. You just had one, but I'll give you a few sprays. Okay. Let me get to the story. All right. So, <clears throat> yesterday when I came home, she was screaming. She was screaming at me, and she was mad. Uh-oh. Ginger, are you okay? She didn't, didn't really want the dog to be here. She's a good dog. But, <clears throat> okay, I got inside. She's screaming mad. Um, I went ahead and fed the dogs, and I thought, she'll calm down a little bit. And she really didn't. So, I decided to move her. Um, she was tired of where she was, and I thought I'd move her. <laughs> since there's still some daylight outside to her favorite spot and kind of sit out here. Well, <laughs> it was not good. I know. 
is not good. Um, she bit me hard several places. One place was very tender. And um, she was mad. She was absolutely trying to discipline me. And so I have been working harder at getting her not to bite. And I was firm and I told her no. I was really into her beak. I, I just decided we're going to try some firm stuff. Because this biting hard will not work. No, no, you can, you'll never get to socialize and, and be an ambassador like that. Okay. <clears throat> so when she did that, instinctively, I had, I don't know how I did it. I guess she was on my hand here. Or maybe she was right on my hand. But anyway, um, I just quickly moved to throw her down. Because she loves the upside down play. And also I thought it would redirect her from body. <laughs> and you know what happened? I did it so quick, she flew away. <laughs> and she doesn't even, you don't even have flop feathers. So she can't get lift. Um, and she flew over into a neighbor's, um, almost looks like a golf course there. It's beautiful. And, uh, it was an experience. And since we are bonded, I knew she was going to come to me because she started saying, What you doing? What you doing? And I was like, What are you doing? So rather than running around the neighborhood, I don't have a gate there, and going to rescue her like I did when she got scared of the chainsaw. Now, um, since it was botting, I, I was strict. And I, I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I'm trying what I can. Don't bite. Don't. Mm, thank you. She does like to to uh, put her beak in. And it's probably not healthy, but anyway, it's one of her things that she does. And she likes to groom my hair. <laughs> okay, so I just walked to the back fence. It's a pretty deep yard. And... Uh, I decided that it was going to be a lot of work, and I don't know if this will pair in her brain or not, but we'll see. Uh, she said she doesn't do a lot of walking. It's all climbing and playing and uh, jungle gyms type stuff. I mean, she's walked on the grass a little, but she really hadn't had much experience with that. <laughs> and she, I just had her do that work. I stood there. And she walked. It was a long ways. And it was a struggle for her. And she started getting tired. And I stood, but I stood there and talked to her. And she was coming this way. So, I think, okay, we're, we're cool. That all worked. Now, today, <clears throat> I uh, realized it was time for me to take a break and spend a little more time back in the yard calm down, not get too over-focused on this silly garage sale. And she started asking for water, and she loves that spray, so I let her ride on my shoulder, which we do all the time. Yeah, or pretty often. She'll play in the tree most of the day if I'm working. But, <clears throat> let her ride on my shoulder, and I had to bend over to turn the water faucet on and there's a squeak sound that seems like no big deal but apparently it shocked her and she flew away today I was like this is not going to work but we're so well bonded that she can't stand to be very far but the the bad thing is the botting's hard um, it's really, I would say it's good to get, if you really, really want a macaw, to try to find one that's just winged because you, they won't get to that stage unless you like to play rough with them. Then, yeah, they'll start doing that. And some guys enjoy it. <clears throat> so, and she's been played rough with in the past. How old were you when I got you four? So, um, it took a lot of calming down. Um, the spray bottle is one thing that calms it pretty quick. So today she flew 
all the way through the long deep backyard into the neighbor's trees there's what I, it's almost like a jungle it's just grown up there <laughs> and I walked back that way and she was like what you doing what you doing so she's checking to see like they would with their mate they would call back and they do a um, contact call because they really don't want to get they're, they're so well bonded that they don't really want you to get out of sight. They like to um, spend time with you. So I walked back there in the jungle part. That's Well, I went, walked back to my fence and I saw her. <laughs> she can't get lift because her wings are clipped. So she flew at a maybe, maybe seven to eight feet tall but a distance into the trees at that side so she starts calling what you doing and i'm thinking should i do the discipline that i tried because she bit but this was just a a scared thing because she heard the sound which i, I can understand that she's a bird and that's that's part of their flight issue because they avoid danger uh, chainsaw scared her um, so so bad that's another thing you just have to be careful if you really want to get them out and be outside and play with them and allow them to be birds then you develop a strong bond but you got to have time so that's why I did it after retirement <clears throat> so this is the downside if you really want that bond teach them new words <clears throat> enjoy um, I love being single with the animals. I love animals. So it worked for me. And even if I knew all this, I think it would help me think through how I would handle situations. Um, because everything I've ever done with her has been a positive kind of reinforcement to build our bond. This is really my first time to try something sort of strict. Because she, they want to train you to do exactly what you want. And if you let them do a lot of that, it's, it can be, become, they can become very spoiled. So you just have to know that there's a huge personality issue there. Now she's wanting me to scratch her beak. And I did, I did want her to be in the video. I started to do it without her, but um, I think it's cool for y'all to get to see how she likes to interact. I like to try to catch her tongue. She loves that. Sometimes once we're playing like that, she will, she'll start saying, I love you, I love you, because she loves that interaction. And it's very meaningful. It's always at the right time. Here she goes. She may, Once she starts bobbing her head, that's what they do with mates, because they give each other, that's a gift. <laughs> they regurgitate, which is kind of, that's part, that's how birds live. And that's sort of like a kiss or a blessing to do that for their mate. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, I guess you and your mate train each other, don't you? When you, they, they mate for life. So uh, people that give up birds and have issues, it's so hard for them. And, and another thing, I mean, I haven't experienced this, but I did know about it to be aware of is that when they are under stress which if they have to go to a rescue place and they don't get attention and lots of birds are yelling which some of the rescue places are really difficult and challenging but um their their default typically is pulling out their feathers so they start self-mutilating and it's all anxiety because um when you, if you if you really want to get a bird, <laughs> you need to be aware of the reality and how challenging it is. So, um, I hope this is helpful. And, uh, I mean, you can still see some of the positives and how we play. She's got all these games that she likes um, that, that are fun. <laughs> but... I do like to put her up on her perch and do some other things. She enjoys that. She you know, puts her head in the water, and it's it's really cool. She's happy because she can see me. So, yeah.
yeah and usually in the evening before bed we do some grooming where I rub her top of her head check on her pin feathers reinforce our bond otherwise she really doesn't want to go to bed but I like to get her in bed when it's by 8 30 or 9 when it's starting to get dark and I have it in a different room and she sleeps very well she doesn't yell out or cause any problems like some people have so I did research some of the ways to handle a few issues and I hope that what I share with you is helpful and if you have any questions put them in the comment section I will definitely respond quickly it doesn't mean I know but I can refer you to people who do and um Hey, please like, please subscribe to the channel. I don't, I don't put up a lot of videos, maybe once a week. I try to keep you informed. And another thing is doing some gardening and germinating seeds. So I've been doing some of that on the video. All right. Are you ready to say goodbye? Goodbye. She doesn't have goodbye down yet. But we, I still practice it a little bit. Just, just every now and then. Because a lot of times... It's, when as they learn words, it's kind of associated with something. Um, it's, that's definitely how water came along. And it's funny, she'll do a whole sentence. She looks like, it's sort of gobbledygook, and then want water, and then she goes, yee-haw! <laughs> and who knows if I can catch that on camera, because, um, I mean, yeah, it happens quite a bit, but I don't have the camera on usually when it happens. <laughs> and I just giggle and give her some spray and if I have you know if I'm able to she even likes to spray from the water hose if it's on mist because she loves to get really wet and flap her wings and it helps her stay strong she's doing a lot of grooming now and I see the light shining I don't know if you can see it okay I can get long-winded guys thank you comments questions anything um, I just want to share and hopefully help others that may be considering a McCall or you or <laughs> I've even known some people that impulsively bought a McCall and had so much to learn and so much time to invest and after three or four years they love it once they learn they had to really figure out what's going on because their I don't know if you want to call it IQ is usually between four and five year olds like equal to that when you're getting them a call they're very intelligent like um african greys are as well and you you uh, you need to be ready to invest your time and have tons of patience but it does teach you a lot about life investing in relationships forgiveness bonding all that cool stuff alrighty talk to you soon love you guys bye bye